Hello and welcome back to the Juno Douglas City Museum. I'm Nico Sanguinetti. I'm the curator of collections and exhibits here at the City Museum. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about an interesting aspect of World War I that I stumbled across when I was doing research on a different project. I was looking through newspapers from World War I and kept coming across these announcements for what were titled the Four Minute Men, with then a list of men and a list of theaters in both Juno and Douglas. No additional information, no topics, and even the title itself was a bit confusing. Are these a group of men that then give one minute speeches for men to one minute? Were they talking for four minutes? Were, were they talking on, was it related to the war? Was it a community effort? The names themselves didn't jump out at me as anyone famous, so it wouldn't necessarily be somebody who was touring. Needless to say, I had a lot of questions. So when I had a few minutes, I decided to deep dive into what the Four Minute Men were to uncover this interesting aspect of the home front during World War I that I would like to share with you today in our City Museum's curator chat. So World War I began in 1914 with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by uh, Gavrilo Princip from the Serbian Black Hand. And originally, the United States remained neutral in the conflict. President Woodrow Wilson actually ran and won on a campaign of neutrality and had so far kept the United States out of the war. However, as we near 1917, it's becoming very evident that the conflict is, a globe, is on a global scale and was definitely impacting the United States. And in seeing how the tide was going, it could very really negatively impact the United States with the outcome if they did not become involved. However, because he had ran on that platform of neutrality, President Wilson was confronted with a very real problem. How did he turn public support for a war that he had promised to keep the public out of? So he really needed a propaganda campaign to stir up support for the war effort. And the political climate at the time presented some unique challenges. Uh, the president needed to address a very spread out and fragmented audience, and he had to address the country's self-perception to generate support for the war. The Four Minute Men provided an answer. They were a group that was cultivated by the Committee on Public Information, or the CPI. And it's in doing research, it very much looks like one of the earliest modern propaganda offices, and it was headed by a man named George Creel. Depending on your definition and how you view Creel, he has been described as a journalist, a newspaper man, and or a muckraker. But he knew how to work the public. He aimed to systematically reach every person in the United States with patriotic information. He also had a goal of censoring what he, con what he considered seditious anti-propaganda. And he trained thousands of volunteers, or rather the CPI trained thousands of volunteer speakers to make these patriotic appeals to their local community. Such topics of these appeals included liberty bonds, registering for the, for the draft, rationing food, recruiting unskilled workers for munitions jobs, and support for the Red Cross. And interestingly enough, they reached a number of ethnic groups within their, in their own language, within their own communities. And the Four Minute Men were generally members of the local community, generally middle-aged men, too old to fight, but old enough to have a way with the crowd. Very often lawyers, preachers, or small town politicians that had experience speaking to groups. They were given general talking points, but then encouraged to create their own speeches. And they were limited to four minutes, as that was the general average time that it took to switch reels in a moving picture house, which is why I was seeing them being housed in these theaters. We already had a contained audience in these uh, movie theaters, and they had four minutes of time where they weren't going to be doing anything, and they were going to be paying attention to whoever was sitting in front of them. Enter the Four Minute Men. They were rotated on a schedule to make sure that their speeches never got dull. They were meant to speak from the heart, so their speeches didn't sound rehearsed or something that was just churned out by a propaganda machine. And they were very successful because they were able to represent a community voice as well as a community language, depending on what community they were coming from. They generally 
always spoke about the war effort uh, in a positive light and would portray the greatness of the American home front and the viciousness of the enemy, the tyranny of the of the enemy. And the war was often portrayed as that epic crusade against tyranny. And they continued until the war ended in 1918. Afterwards, Creel determined that they weren't useful anymore because they couldn't continue the program with a bipartisan focus. In his mind, the Four Minute Men were a bipartisan, or a nonpartisan, really, effort, interestingly enough. So with the war ended, their uh, purpose had ended, and they ceased to exist. And here in Juneau, they appeared in about December 1917 and continued through the end of the war in 1918. And as I mentioned, just a very short period of time, and they were a part of a much larger propaganda plan that Creel created to cover every aspect of media. So newsprint, radio, the Four Minute Men, there were leaflets, pamphlets, news bulletins, schoolroom materials, really systematically reaching out to every corner of America and every person he could possibly get his hands on. So a very early attempt at creating this positive view and create support for a war that previously no one had any interest in. So just wanted to share that with everyone on today's Curators Chat and another great example of the fun that comes from working in a museum when you're looking for something else and you stumble across a very different, interesting story. So thank you all for watching today and keep your eye out for our next edition of Curators Chat or Artifact Reveal.